This is a neat little 1960s Sanyo transistor radio. Uh, it's apparently eight transistors and it's the Super Fringe Sanyo Deluxe. Model numbers ripped off on the insides, but I was able to find some information on Radio Museum. Not sure if it's the exact right model number, but it's probably close enough. When I got it, it just still doesn't really work. Uh, but I at least cleaned the volume control on the tuner. They were just really messed up. funny it's got to click this way but nothing going off I think it was like that before too I don't know sometimes if you spray contact cleaner in it can uh, affect these I've only ever experienced that once and I think that was a time when I was young and instead of using contact cleaner I used WD-40 which you do not want to use on this stuff. Especially if it has a power switch in there, that power switch won't work anymore if you're done. Anyway, I'm going to try recapping this and aligning it because I want to see it work well. Here's a look at the inside. I think Shango on YouTube did a video of the channel master variation of this that's fairly similar. Speaker looked a little older. I think this might be a newer build, but as you can see, there really isn't anything left of the model, unfortunately, so. Oh well. And all these plastic things, this orange and green here, these are all the electrolytic capacitors that are known to go bad. And uh, I'm just gonna do a bulk recap, cause like, whatever, I've got them all. The transistors are uh, these guys. So you got one, two, three, four along the IF. And then I believe these up here are for the audio. So you got one, two, three, four. I'm gonna go find the schematic. Might have more information. Yeah, I got a schematic. Um, if Radio Museum, by the way, the membership is completely worth it. If anyone's doing this sort of stuff, I highly recommend paying for it. It it pays for itself. It's there's so much valuable information on there. It's almost overwhelming how helpful it can be. Uh, anyway, I'm thinking that because of the age of this, and you can see these are all PMP, that these are germanium, but I don't know enough to say that for certain. Uh, I'm not going to pretend I do, so. Whatever. See the two transformers there for the audio? Right here. And you can see as the audio stage goes along, you've got two transistors there. And stuff. I don't know. I know what these do. I'm never good at like explaining the name and stuff like that. So let's get recapping. Okay, this is, uh, this is a little bit more involved to get inside than some of the other uh, radios. On this side, you've got the two headphone jacks. Uh, one is, I believe, a higher um, amplification than the other. This one of them is meant more for an earphone, one's for an external speaker. You can just take the nuts, these, uh, these uh, rings off of them. I was just using two flat blade screwdrivers. If you just sort of hold them together and line them up and then give it a twist, it'll come out no problem. The headphone, or sorry, the connector on the side that's for an external antenna, which is somewhere here, right there. This one can just come off with a regular um, flat blade screwdriver. And then there's the nut behind it. There's uh, three screws holding this whole chassis in. The fourth screw is this standoff, so don't forget about that. And then uh, you just need to pop the uh, dial indicator off. 
Unfortunately, this doesn't look like it's keyed, so putting it back on will be trying to align the band again. Fun. I just put some paper between this um, metal piece on the back and then just sort of pried it up gently. And then the last piece to remove is the back of the tuning dial, which has three very tiny flat screwdrivers. And now I can see in here, very early PCB. Pretty dirty inside too. Yeah, listen to that. On, off. Off doesn't have the click. Hmm. Oh well. One thing to consider, a lot of these have wires soldered over top of the pads. There's a bunch of wires just jammed in here. Uh, so take pictures uh, to, to remember where they go. Because I just had to remove two wires to get at one cap. First one done. And um, these capacitors, I didn't quite know what to make of the marking here. There's a little black dot on one side. So I measured the voltage across this capacitor when it was on and the black dot went to the negative. So I'm going to measure a few more as I do this, but I believe the black dot is going to go to the negative. I just want to, you know, get a majority rule kind of thing here. So one down, many to go. Oh, and of course I'm testing as I go along. So that way if I screw up at some point, I won't have to go back and figure out where I screwed up. All right, it was this one here. So 30 microfarad and it looked like the first stage or the oscillator it's making a squealing so probably oscillator it's right at the beginning here uh yeah <laughs> i haven't even soldered this this bodge wire back on i'm just having it touching there but yeah that's that's woken it up so uh that's how many i went into i started with the amplifier knowing that it wasn't in the amplifier stage and i've been working my way to save save these horrible ones for last because i gotta unsolder this little bridge wire here, pull all these up, and then deal with it. So yeah, man, step by step, step by step. And it's real hard to make this look nice. This is how the wire was here. Like it's a stranded wire and it wasn't like twisted together and nicely set on top. All these wires is just, ugh, is very early Japanese manufacturing, I guess. I, I don't have high opinions of Sanyo, so that, that probably factors into it. But yeah, I'm going to finish recapping it because it'll be like, what, another two bucks worth of caps to refinish it? Who says AM is dead? Something that really makes this a bit more of a pain in the butt is see how these are all bent at a 90 degree angle. Uh, modern electronics, and when I replace a component, I'll usually sort of bend the leads out just a bit at a V to prevent the part from falling out, but not at a full 90. Because the problem is a full 90, even when you remove all the solder here, you still gotta kinda bend this up and, and get it moving. This thing though, oh, oh, it makes it easy. I'm, I'm doing everything too ironed now. back together after the recap. Um, this was a little bit fidgety to get back in. So sort of an order of op operations where you do two things at once. And um, yeah, it's a lot more sensitive now. So I'm just gonna show how it tunes now. Executive orders are basically the best way to just... 
So yeah, it's not going to pick up a ton down here, but it sounds a lot better. So the next step, because I replaced the caps, I'm going to try and align this. A little schematic here has the alignment procedure. Minus 155, no, plus 135. Another one is the second one for knocking me off the parlor at Freedom Watch. Please. That can, can exist even with us. Man, the top of that dial is hot. Uh, I'm in the basement, so getting any stations with all this, there's like a computer behind me and LED lights and stuff, getting any AM down here is, is just a pain. I took this upstairs, I'm getting American stations, ESPN radio, something from New Jersey. This is in my house, surrounded by LED lights, flat screen TV, computer. I, I am blown away. So just to recap, I have aligned this and it sounds amazing. And I just want to kind of show the method that I used and the tools that I used and stuff like that. It's definitely an amateur way, it's probably not the right way, but hey, I'm going to show it anyway. All I really had was this alignment procedure and this schematic. And for me, I'm not as versed, as well versed on the system other people. So identifying these on the board, like for example, you have the trimmers on the back of the tuning capacitor, but there's four of them. And I, I wouldn't be able to identify, okay, top left, bottom right. So thankfully, and please ignore that my printer decided to just do a garbage job on the antique radio forms uh, mag or mag wrote out a beautiful description for the channel master 6515 which internally i believe is the same as this one it's the eight transistor version step one is aligning the if and that's adjusting a1 a2 and a3 so when adjusting if possible use a plastic alignment tool because then the metal isn't going to affect what you do. Uh, I've used metal ones and it's kind of a lot more tricky because every time you lift up when you're done, it slightly changes. See, it's, it's kind of a pain in the butt. So um, it says to inject a 455 kilohertz signal. So I got this old Heath kit. Set the range 320 to, or 310 to 1100 kilocycles. It's got a nice little indent there. 455. I find that this first step with IF, I have the um, attenuation pretty low. So I have this set to low and this fairly low. Uh, ground side, just ground to the radio. Positive side of the signal, I'm running it through a 0.1 microfarad capacitor to the antenna connection on the tuning capacitor, which is easy on here because this is an external antenna connector so you see it just it's running through a capacitor so I'm just injecting my own through a capacitor you can see there's a little jumper here that goes off to the antenna wire there as well so that's another indicator anyway uh, it says do, do, do adjust with tuning gang fully closed so that means it's at the bottom of the dial so I'm just going to turn this on and you can just hear it I really need to clean that. I'm just go through and adjust these. of the steps for the um, RF section um, you don't connect directly anymore so I just 
took a coil of wire and just sort of sit it there. Um, but that means I do crank up the signal strength. And first step, so still at the bottom of the dial, set the signal generator to 530 kilocycles, which is the bottom of the dial, or it should be. So let's move this up to, I gotta look outside the camera here, 530, right there. Now if I turn this on, I should hear it. And I do. Just enough so I can hear it. And it says, uh, adjust A4. A4 is the can one row higher and to the left of the three IF cans. Now this threw me off because I did not notice this was sealed in wax, this can right here. So I can just sort of get in there and adjust it. There we go. And sometimes you gotta shut your lights off. So with that done, um, next step, tune all the way to the top of the dial, adjust A5. A5, it says, do, 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 bottom right adjustment of the back of the tuning cap. So it's this guy right here. So let's tune all the way up. And we'll go and change this to 1650. And you can hear it's already pretty close. This one's a real tricky one. Perfect. Now, once that's done, you start doing the middle of the bands. So set the generator to 600. So we'll go back down, set this to 600. And I'm just going to flip this over and tune it to 600 on the dial. These little lines seem to correspond to the numbers. Now it's saying at 600, adjust A6, which is the fourth uh, leftmost can on the board. So uh, A6 is this one here. It's right about there. It also says to adjust A7. A7 is the sliding coil on the antenna rod. I'm going to be honest, I have no idea what that is. Um, so I just skipped it. I. <laughs> not really sure what I'm supposed to do there so yeah that one just stays move on to the next one 1400 so we'll tune up to 1400 and do, 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 do. right there and I'll get the radio set to 1400 and the two uh, tuning oops Two tuning coils are A8, bottom left, A9, top right. So we'll do bottom left first. And that's not really surprising because I've already done this. Uh, but yeah, that's really about it. You can keep going back to the other steps to tweak it a little bit. You know, uh, done, doing it the second time, I feel like uh, it may e e be even better than it was the first time. Thank you.
Mula lunes hanggang biyernes, sa 5 y media hanggang alas 9 ng umaga. Jazz record bar. A lot of musicians came through there, so I. Uh... You made it. Fox's Jackie Abondias. America is listening to Fox News. We'll make sure it's more speakers. Uh... Just to be an encourager for them and let them know that, you know, mom is in their corner and that God loves them. quarterback at this point by almost any method. Why not look at some other radios I have just for fun? Um, start with this one. All right, I'm, I'm just doing some research on these after the fact to you know put the model number in the year and stuff. What? This 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 can't be right. This is insane. Like seriously, what the fuck? It's a 1960s Sanyo transistor radio. Doesn't work. This one has a lot of problems. The tuner seizes up. You can lube it up a little bit, but there's gunk right inside, and it's one of those all enclosed uh, tuning capacitors. So I don't. I don't. I would have to get real into this thing to know how to fix it. It's also stone dead. I think it draws, you know, a couple of milliamps when you turn it on, but there's no sound, so the audio stage is dead. Uh, you even feel like. This capacitor is completely not soldered correctly. The build quality is kind of poor. It's very cool looking though. Like, the style of this kind of matches that other Sanyo. So, it's there for eye candy. Next is this little Sony. I, I really love the look of this with the, this is like a 1970s style or like maybe late 60s with these little holes. And uh, pop the open, pop the back open here. The thing that always gets me with this one is this part of the back hooks around the volume control, so I just have to remember to kind of pull it that, that way to open it up. Get a look inside. Get some light there. And you can see it's a, a mix of, of, of transistors. These are like the more modern silicon transistors, you got four there, and then these two, which I'm assuming are the audio output, are the older style, possibly germanium. So, six transistors. Here I am pretending to know what I'm talking about. Yeah, see, it's got a hook like that. Going to see challenges throughout their lives, and you know, last ten. Yeah. See you with a 
plan to fulfill an important... The uh, nutritionist and to add to that the medication Canadian television form uh, that that could be made the stuff of satire. The parody wasn't limited to TV. Distant readers, we're really distant now, 2,000 years later. Off, all right? All right, off. I'm just going to do it, all right? Good. Nick Sirianni. Really tight tuning, like a small change here makes a big difference. This is also during the day and in a basement with lots of noise, but I, I think it works pretty well. Up next is this really weird looking 1970s RCA. It's got that harvest gold color. I don't think this is yellowing over time. It is really, really just awful harvest gold. You can see the little tuning indicator there. Let's pop this open. It's got a Foster speaker and uh, all the transistor tops have been colored I guess so that you can see what they're used for. Again I don't really know. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. What? Five, six, seven, eight. It says eight transistors. That seems like a lot for a cheesy little radio like this. I don't know what to say about that. It does work really well, so I mean, this was at the time where more is better. Not very sensitive at all right now. Um, at night, it's a lot better. This is not as sensitive as the Sony. Uh, it could just need um, an alignment or something because I would expect this to work a little better. RCA of the time was not the 90s RCA you think of as being junk. This, this should be a good radio. Maybe I'll play around with it, try and align it. Up next is this little Sanyo RP1250. Uh, I really like this one. It's got a nice style to it. It's kind of different than all the others. Uh, it's a horizontal. The volume has a little indicator on the front. Um, just everything about it feels nice. <laughs> Don't know how else to describe it. Let's see how it works. How it works. It's interesting how the numbers are crammed on the dial. When it's sitting here, you'd look at that and think, oh, is that getting close to 1600? But that little orange line corresponds to 1200. And what I was picking up there was, I believe, 1290. So it's just these tuning dials were very weird to read on some of these. But it does seem accurate. And this one is unique. It runs on three volts. So it just has two double A's inside of it. And it should be six transistors. If you look, one, two, three, four, five, and then a sixth one right there. Nothing special, but I, I like it.
And finally, we have the prominent. Saving the worst for last. Uh, this thing has been sold under so many different names. This is just the cheap of the cheap, the dollar store, department store special of the time. Uh, it is, I've seen it in different colors and whatnot. Uh, mine doesn't work very well. Anything below 800 uh, kilohertz is dead. Even testing it with my signal generator, below about 815 I get nothing. Yeah, so something's wrong with it and I don't really care enough about it to fix it. Also, the speaker on this thing sounds horrible. <laughs> Dr. Charles Stanley, helping you grow in Christ every day, weekdays, in that risk-free trial of Calmax. Again, this is only a million people still to this day point to this is the moment everything changed. But whether you agree with those claims or not, anything in between. Oddshark.net. So it gets all the local stations, doesn't really go beyond that. I mean, none of these are going to get very much right now because of what that grinding sound is. I think it's all my Raspberry Pis and stuff that are nearby. All those RF modulators, I probably should shut them off. Uh, this has been shown in so many different videos from other people, it's pretty ubiquitous. One, two, three, four, five transistors. Uh, what What's kind of neat is, let me get some light going here. The schematic is printed off extremely tiny in the back here. And you just look, these, these radios are so simple. So simple, sold for, you know, a couple dollars back then. I like this one because it's, cheap, not because it's good. <laughs>